know it's been a while since I made a video, I think quite a few months. Um, the reasons for that is that I had a lot of pressure on me um, from various people trying to stop me from making these videos. Um, and they gave numerous reasons. One of the reasons I was told that I should stop making these videos is because it might impact my you know employment opportunities or career or things like that um and for a while i did think about it and then i just got to the point recently i think especially with all the things that have been coming out in the media recently about um things like the jimmy savile case um and you know extensive cover-ups um in the establishment you know bbc um various um you know help, sort of educational um care homes educational establishments uh hospitals um prisons they were all complicit in in the cover-up of all of this abuse and it just made me think that I haven't seen that many people making videos on this topic yet. Obviously, there are people that do, um, you know, like you've got the UK column, um, and there are people, you know, people like Bill Maloney um, with his documentary, and then obviously, you know, he's been doing a lot to sort of uncover what's really been going on. Um, but it's one of those topics where a lot of people are just afraid to to open up and a lot of people are afraid to talk about it, um, let alone do videos about it. Um, but I just got to the point where I just thought, actually I do want to do a video on it and talk about it and get people talking about it and raise awareness because, okay, yes, there is a lot of awareness about it, but I do feel that it's being pushed in a certain direction in the media. Um, whilst at the moment, obviously, it's a very good thing that it's coming out and that people are being made, made aware of um, the extensive corruption and, and extensive um, um, abuse and just the horrific things that went on. Um, you know, and how it kind of links. At first, it started off as you know, a couple of 15-year-old girls or 14-year-old girls saying that, that they were, you know, touched up and then another one said she was raped and then suddenly it starts coming out that he has links to um, Hort de la Garenne in Jersey, the, care, the famous care home where obviously there was a lot of um, uh, abuse going on there and then there was a big cover-up recently when they tried to investigate that um, and there was supposedly... Um, children's remains uh, found, you know, buried under the floor, but then all of a sudden, mysteriously, the, the investigation was dropped and they said, oh, it was just coconuts or something, which is just ridiculous. I don't believe that for a minute. <laughs> um, so, so I think the important thing um, for me was that you know, the reason all of this abuse has gone on is the reason all of this abuse has gone on is because people have been um, too afraid to speak up because they've thought that they might lose their jobs. Um, and I thought, well, I lost my job two weeks ago. So even though people have said to me, even though people have said to me, well, you shouldn't be um, doing a, a film on this topic or on this, on X, Y, and Z, you know, because a potential employer might see it. Well, I say I don't want to work for someone that doesn't want people speaking up about things like child abuse. You know, that's it's like an extremely serious matter, not to mention a criminal matter. So, why would I want to work for someone that that wants to be complicit in something like that anyway? So. Um, here I am talking about it, probably not making much sense, but I just wanted to raise awareness of it. Um, and that I think 
a lot more people should actually speak out about things because if everyone spoke out about things then you know people wouldn't be you know it, you, you, it wouldn't be like just the odd person sort of you know being seen as as like a whistleblower there's a couple of things that I wanted to mention in relation to this whole um, issue a lot of people I mean you know I look at the comment section in all the newspapers and see what people have how people are reacting and to see um, a lot of people are very shocked obviously because they're thinking that you know here was this man that was supposedly this incredibly charitable and saintly um, you know uh, uh, untouchable um, celebrity um, and yet yeah, turns out he was you know the exact opposite of the the kind of personnel that he was putting across you know he was a wolf in sheep's clothing or he was a you know like the devil in disguise so to speak um personally i don't think that it was you know i i always thought it was quite obvious that there was something um quite wrong with him just because he always came across as quite a cold um person um and I just always found it strange that, you know, despite being someone that was very, you know, in the public eye, he never once sort of ever had, um, you know, a, a wife or a partner, you know, of the same sort of age, you know. I mean, I know that obviously a lot of celebrities will end up with, you know, much younger wives or, or boyfriends or whatever. But, you know, usually at some point throughout their life, they'll have, you know, some sort of life partner or husband or wife. Um, so I kind of, it did always strike me as odd that, you know, I know you can't judge someone by the fact that they go through the whole 84 years of their life single. But it did kind of make me think, you know, well, clearly all along he was incapable of having a, a normal sort of loving relationship um, and that obviously is um, because he was and that's obviously because he was all along um, only interested in children and and young girls um, so when all these revelations came out I, I didn't particularly think oh you know, wow, that, there's the shock of the century. Um, what kind of made me, you know, just one thing that really struck me was how so many people would have been complicit in the whole cover-up. You know, it was it's not just like one or two people. It's, he was given the keys to Broadmoor um, to, you know, socialise with rapists and murderers and you know all sorts of crazy people he was given a free reign of children's wards hospitals um morgues um and um you know he was allowed to park his caravan in the grounds of uh, a girls school for um for girls that had had troubled backgrounds um, and uh, you know a lot of the girls did come forward and, and try and talk about it at the time and unfortunately um, they were just slapped down and told to be quiet and you know how dare they um, you know bring down try to you know sully the name of uh, Saint Jimmy um, and, you know, what it's just, I think the important thing to realise is that whilst a lot of people, especially the general public, you know, everyone's expressing uh, a great deal of shock and, you know, and anger and dismay at um, the fact that, you know, this well-known person could have you know, done such horrible things and, and duped everyone. 
Uh, what um, needs to be said is that it's not really a surprise because, you know, he, he was part of the establishment, the media, the, pol the political establishment, the media, um, the judicial establishment, the police, everyone was in cahoots and, you know, they all conspired to cover up. And whilst I'm not saying that every single person in the in the establishment or in the media um, is guilty, um, the important thing to realise is that actually um, this whole Jimmy Savile um, child abuse thing is actually just the tip of the iceberg and it's part of a much greater, much bigger um, issue. Um, um, you know, people people in positions of great power whether it's, you know, great wealth or great political power or great, you know, influence, um, they don't get there, you know, just... The thing to realise is that it's all part of something much bigger um, and, you know, a lot of... This is another reason why a lot of people don't like talking about it um because people in high up places um politicians are all you know not all of them obviously but i've had um they didn't name names but i've been told from people who work in politics that you know child abuse and that sort of quite sort of satanic ritual um, abuse is, you know, it's very common um, and it's part of something bigger, it's part of, you know, a, a, a black male type, you know, it's a way to keep people quiet, it's a way to control people, get people to do what they want um, and It is a really horrible subject, but the important thing to know is that, you know, just because you and me wouldn't do such something so horrific, you know, you can't assume that everyone is as nice as you, or, you know, you can't assume that everyone has the same sort of moral code or boundary as you. Um, now, unfortunately, a lot of people in the establishment probably most people in the establishment know about stuff like this that's going on and they don't want to talk about it because um, you know they don't become successful wealthy powerful um, public figures by you know by being good honest moral people you know at the end of the day I know there'll be a lot of people that will say, well, you you know, I can't accuse sort of all, I can't accuse all wealthy sort of powerful people of having no morals, but a lot of them have got to that position by treading on other people. Um, and that's the important thing to realise that, you know, they're, they're basically, you know, not necessarily they're not necessarily living by living and working by the same code of conduct and you know code of ethics as say you or you or I. Um, it's a very different mindset, very different world um, that they inhabit. Um, something that I was thinking about the other day was how interesting it is that the media, whenever it reports stories about paedophiles and and child abusers um, nearly every time it, 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 there's a kind of stereotype that they use um, that I think you know possibly they've been doing it in a, in a way to protect the establishment because you know whenever you read an article about a child abuse a child abuser or a paedophile it's they're always painted as a kind of bit of a loner, a bit of a, you know, unsocial, you know, un, um, 
unemotional, unsociable, kind of outcast, social outcast, sort of usually from a sort of, you know, lower or middle class, middle class to lower, you know, usually more, more often than not from a, 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 a lower class background. Um, was painted as this kind of, you know, no hope type, you know, socially dysfunctional, you know, lower class, Mac, you know, Mac wearing kind of weirdo. Um, when in fact, you know, there's actually, you know, a, a lot of child abuse is actually perpetrated by sort of by successful, wealthy, professional um, people very often with links to the establishment, you know, politicians, policemen, judges, um, you know, entertainers, celebrities, um, you know, uh, bishops, you know. <laughs> um, so, you know, I just find it interesting that whenever you see it reported in the media, it's, it's always sort of pointing, it's almost like they're trying to deflect the attention away from themselves and they're trying to say, oh look, you know, the only paedophiles that exist are Mac wearing, you know, um, weirdos from, you know, council estates and, you know, and you, you never read really cases reported, you know, of say, you know, chief of police or, <laughs> Um, obviously you do see them reported about, you know, we all know about the sort of um, the priests um, in the Catholic Church and, you know, in, and, uh, you know, other churches as well. I think it's not just the Catholic churches. It's um, a problem that is kind of endemic throughout a lot of different churches. But obviously with the Catholic Church, it's something that's, that's been dealt with very badly. So that was just something that struck me as quite interesting and, you know, it's kind of a question of where do we go from here because, you know, this whole, you know, this whole Jimmy Savile thing could, could really, you know, be the, the um, open the floodgates and, you know, the whole house of cards could come tumbling down. Um, but the question is, you know, everyone's, I find it quite ridiculous how everyone's saying oh there should be an investigation into it but it's it's going to be you know them the establishment investigating themselves so <laughs> I mean of course yeah there should be an investigation into it but you know how can we trust that you know it's like <laughs> seeing it's a, the uh, BBC doing an investigation into their own um, corruption and then you know the police doing an investigation into their own corruption and the you know, the government doing an investigation into their own corruption. It's just like a farce. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, is it all just going to be sort of hushed up? Or, you know, I, I find that the way that the media is going at the moment, you know, yes, it's great that all this stuff is coming out finally um, and that people, I think, a lot of people are going to have their eyes opened to the reality of, you know, how... Um, how kind of corrupt and rotten to the core the establishment actually is and you know that it's not just a bit of financial corruption it's you know gen genuinely disgusting satanic vile uh you know devil worshipping corruption it's not just like <laughs> it's not just that oh here's an expenses scam or oh look you know it it's it goes really deep into the whole you know, the belief system of, of those in power. Um, and that's what, that's what I think people need to realize. Um, and of course, yes, a lot of people do who are watching this already know this, but then there'll be people who are maybe starting to have their eyes open by what's, what they've seen, you know, the cover up and everything. And maybe they're looking for answers and, you know, maybe, maybe they don't want to believe that their beloved government, <laughs> or their beloved, uh, you know, their beloved uh, BBC or, or whatever that could could actually be harbouring kind of some quite, you know, dark skeletons in their closet. Um, probably quite literally as well. <laughs> um, so 
I think the thing is, is you know, it's important to raise awareness and to to keep, you know, talking about it and to actually, you know, really, um, to really put pressure on the establishment and on the politicians and, you know, to, to make it a case that won't go away, you know, because at the moment I think that the way the media is sort of, the way the media is um, approaching it is, it's, yes, it's coming up with all of these things and it's starting to, I think people are starting to join the dots because it's, you know, oh, hang on a second, why was he given the keys for Broadmoor? Hang on, why is he meeting, ma you know, mass murderer and rapist here and, you know, you know, oh, hang on a second, he said that he wasn't linked to Hope de la Garenne care home, but, but now he is all of a sudden and there's evidence that he was lying about that. So if he's lying about that, what else is he lying about? You know, and people do start to join the dots together, which is what needs to be done. Um, but I do see that the media is kind of trying to push it into a slightly different angle. You know, they're sort of starting to go down the route of, oh, let's, you know, dig out all these other celebrities and, you know, all the skeletons in their closet, which, you know, fair enough that, you know, there should be you know, light shed on um, wrongdoing and evil deeds of, of uh, people in power, whether they're celebrities or whatever. Um, so I've got nothing against that. It's just a question of, you know, if the media starts focusing all the attention onto, um, you know, Gary Glitter or media sort of suddenly starts focusing all the attention onto, oh, look, it's a celebrity, mystery celebrity number five has, you know, could have done this and could have done that. and. You know, um, the media is kind of obviously starting to go in a certain direction with it, saying, oh, well, who else can we dig dirt on? You know, who else can we uncover? But I think maybe they're sort of just going for the easy targets. So obviously I'm not against um, shedding light on, on evil deeds and wrongdoings and things like that. That needs to be done. But um, what needs to happen at the same time is that, you know, they're sort of detracting the attention away from the establishment from you know we already know that Jimmy Savile had links to um, politicians and to royalty and to the Pope um, and to Israel and to all these different you know <laughs> it's, you know it's not just any old person that has those connections um, it's someone obviously with quite a lot of influence quite a lot of you know quite well respected uh, did these did all of these groups did all of these people know you know have no knowledge of what he was doing i don't necessarily think that they didn't know um so you know the question is who, who's being protected higher up who's being protected in the establishment you know which members of the political establishment are you know linked to Jimmy Savile which members of the royal family you know could have um, connections there so I'd say it's just very important to you know not to be afraid to talk about things like this um, and also you know not to there are a lot of people that are sort of saying oh why are these girls only just coming up with all of this why are these women coming out with all of these allegations now that he's dead. Well, probably they, they did come out with them before, but they probably were frightened for their lives. Um, and, you know, clearly the establishment didn't want, clearly the establishment um, didn't want any of this information coming out whilst Jimmy Savile was alive because he would have been able to take down half the establishment with him. And that's what people need to realize. And so obviously, now that he's dead, it's like, yep, fine, allegations coming out, um, tear down his grave, bloody, bloody, blah, blah, you know, maybe do a bit of an investigation, but what's next? You know, at what point do we actually start joining the dots together and realising that it's part of a much bigger network of, of um, you know, ritual satanic abuse, um, which is what it is. 
Um, so that's my thoughts on the matter anyway. Um, I've kind of just rambled on a bit and probably haven't made much sense, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out there because I haven't seen that many videos on it and obviously it's kind of more of a UK based news story at the moment. Um, but I think it's important for people all around the world to know about this sort of thing because it is something that goes on, you know, not just in the UK but globally as well in, in various different shapes and, and forms. Um, you know, we, we already know about things like the Skull and Bones Society and, um, and how, um, you know, the and how the American political establishment is um, deeply involved in a lot of very weird stuff. Um, so I just wanted to get this video out there already and uh, get things off my chest. <laughs> um, so that's my thoughts. And um, I hope I can do another video soon. Um, and but it'll be interesting to see how long before um, I get a phone call saying, well, you're doing all the videos again, you know, <laughs> better stop doing these videos. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a free woman and you can't shut me up. I know it's been a while since I made a video, I think quite a few months. Um, the reasons for that is that I had a lot of pressure on me um, from various people trying to stop me from making these videos um, and they gave numerous reasons one of the reasons I was told that I should stop making these videos is because it might impact my you know employment opportunities or career or things like that um, and for a while I did think about it and then I just got to the point recently I think especially with all the things that have been coming out in the media recently about um, things like the Jimmy Savile case um, and you know extensive cover-ups uh, uncover what's really been going on um, but it's one of those topics where a lot of people are just afraid to to open up and a lot of people are afraid to talk about it um, let alone do videos about it um, but I just got to the point where I just thought actually I do want to do a video on it and talk about it and get people talking about it and raise awareness because okay yes there is a lot of awareness about it but I do feel that it's being pushed in a certain direction in the media um, whilst at the moment obviously it's a very good thing that it's coming out and that people are being made, made aware of um, the extensive corruption and, and extensive um, um, abuse and just the horrific things that went on um, you know and how um, in the establishment you know BBC um, various um, you know sort of educational um, care homes, educational establishments, uh, hospitals, um, prisons, they were all complicit in in the cover-up of all of this abuse and it just made me think that I haven't seen that many people making videos on this topic yet obviously there are people that do um, you know like you've got the UK column um, and there are people you know people like Bill Maloney um, with his documentary and then obviously you know he's been doing a lot to sort of like kind of links at first it started off as you know a couple of 15 year old girls or 14 year old girls saying that, that they were you know touched up and then another one said she was raped and then suddenly it starts coming out that he has links to um, Hort de la Garenne in Jersey, the, care, the famous care home where obviously there was a lot of um, uh, abuse going on there and then there was a big cover-up recently when they tried to investigate that um, and 
there were supposedly um, children's remains uh, found, you know, buried under the floor, but then all of a sudden, mysteriously, the, the investigation was dropped and they said, oh, it was just coconuts or something, which is just ridiculous. I don't believe that for a minute. <laughs> um, so, so I think the important thing um, for me was that, you know, the reason all of this abuse has gone on is the reason all of this abuse has gone on is because people have been um, too afraid to speak up because they've thought that they might lose their jobs. Um, and I thought, well, I lost my job two weeks ago. So even though people have said to me, even though people have said to me, well, you shouldn't be um, doing a, a film on this topic or on this, on X, Y, and Z, you know, because a potential employer might see it. Well, I'd say I don't want to work for someone that doesn't want people speaking up about things like child abuse, you know, that's what it's like an extremely serious matter, not to mention a criminal matter. So why would I want to work for someone that that wants to be complicit 